last night we saw Kentucky play Miami. And Kentucky's backcourt is not what we expected it to be coming into the year. I think we all expected DJ Wagner to be the starting guard and to dominate the ball and to make everything happen. And instead come Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think Reed Shepard has been the best freshman in college basketball this season. Point blank. Uh, Sorry to Isaiah Collier. Sorry to Jacoby Walter. When I watch Reed Shepard play basketball, to me, he is the most impressive one because he's doing it on both ends. He's efficient. He makes, have you seen him make a wrong decision yet, CJ? I, I don't think so. He, he's he's like a coach's dream. He's unbelievable. The only thing I can point to is that play at the end of, I think it was the Kansas game where he oh, yeah. that, like fade away, like pointer. Kohler got him. Yeah, uh, McCuller well, got him on, and, and I think. Well, I remember what one you're talking about. Then also, he had a uh, like a a pass where he's floating over the baseline, and he and he throws it out, and and McCuller steals it. Which, I mean, that's one of the best uh, defensive backs basically in college basketball. So, uh, yeah, we're, 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 we've we found two two mistakes. Yeah, that's it. We've got two Reed Shepard mistakes all season. He's averaging twelve points, four rebounds, three point six assists. Uh, have you looked at his uh, shooting splits recently? I, I was going to quiz you. What's his <laughs> offensive rating? Do you know what it is? So I don't know that one. So this is a good quiz. Okay. I would guess it's legitimately like 135. Like 145. Keep going. 155. Like what are we doing? here? 150.2. Yeah, that's insane. That's the that's highest number I, I think I've ever seen. I will say it's 12th in the country. So there are 11 dudes with a higher uh, offensive rating. I will say, what do you think his usage rate is? Oh, it's pretty low. It's probably like 18, 17, 16. So yeah. like that, that would be my only pushback on like, if we start talking is Reed Shepard one and done this kind of thing, like hit, you know, hit the reason for him to come back to school might be one. He's going to make just a ton of NIL money at Kentucky and probably pretty fun being Reed Shepard at Kentucky right now. Uh, <laughs> like I can't imagine a better existence than, than his existence right now. Um, Kyle Tucker and I kind of have a running text thread joke about, about how good it is to be Reed Shepard. But, uh, I I also think like, you know, him to have a chance to come back and kind of be on the ball a little bit more and dominate the ball a little bit more like that might be something. I mean, kind of like a I mean, I don't want to put him in the same category as Steph Curry, but like, you know, Steph Curry going back to Davidson to, to run point guard. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, we're, we're getting in just ridiculous realms with with Reed Shepard that we probably never dreamed we'd get to as a, you know, seven games into his freshman season. So, like, you bring up the Stephen Curry name, and look, I don't want to dive too deeply into this, but from a feel and, like, decision-making perspective and how quickly he does things on Mm -hmm. and off the ball, it is kind of, like, reminiscent. Like, I don't think he's going to be the shooter that Steph is. I don't think he's going to be quite – I don't think he's going to be Stephen Curry. Yeah. Yeah. He's not that dynamic. Like Stephen Curry became one of the most dynamic ball handlers in the NBA. Mm -hmm. There's a case that he's one of the best ball handlers in NBA history. I think. Yeah. I don't think Reed Shepard is going to be that, but just in terms of the feel making the right decision every single time, Steph obviously gets wild with it sometimes. Like that was always uh, Mm -hmm. a factor at Davidson and Reed doesn't necessarily do that. I actually kind of love the role that he's in at Kentucky. They're starting to play more and more on the ball Mm -hmm. uh, for spurts. Obviously, Rob Dillingham comes in and plays on the ball. DJ Wagner starts the game on the ball. You know, that I don't know how long that's going to last at this point. When Reed comes in and plays on the ball, it feels like the offense flows really well. Mm -hmm. But also when he plays off the ball, I love how quickly he's making decisions He's able to move that thing around. He's hitting quick reversals. He's hitting quick little cutters if those guys come available. 
And then additionally, he's shooting 63% from three. And look, I don't think he's a 63% three-point shooter, but I do think he's a legitimate 40%, 45% three-point shooter. Like that's the real talent level that he has as a shot maker. So you have this guy who I think is actually in a similar role to what he would do in the NBA, which makes me wonder if, like, does he need to come back to be on the ball? Like this is, he's actually showcasing the role in my opinion that he'll be playing in yeah. in the NBA right now. Yeah. And we, you haven't even talked about his defense. Like I know. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's where he's even more special. I mean, his, he, he has a, what's his steals rate? 6.9 steals rate. Um, I mean, that's gotta be top in the country, right? Like last night he blocked a three pointer and he's, yeah. he's only six, three. Um, it, it, I got real curious. I was like, I wonder how many three pointers he's blocked. Cause I feel like it could be five, but, uh, it was, he's only blocked the one. Um, but I bet there are some more to come. Like he's, his just instincts and his, um, his anticipation on, on both ends of like what's going on in a basketball game. Um, you know, with Steph Curry having grown up the son of an NBA player and like learn the yeah. game from somebody who really, really knew it. Similar deal with Reed. I mean, his dad didn't play in the NBA, but he was a really, really good basketball player. I think his mom played at Kentucky. Um, yeah. So his mom's like a top, his mom's like in the top 10 of like a number of Kentucky statistical categories yeah. in Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and, and his dad, uh, his dad did play in the NBA for like a minute, Jeff Shepard. Um, but Jeff is obviously like, I remember that. Yeah. Jeff's like extremely well known as like a Kentucky legend at yeah. this point. Um, was most outstanding player at the 1998 Final Four. Uh, th that's why. Reed Shepard has the potential NIL opportunities that he's going to have and why I think that Reed is in a really interesting one and done situation. There's no bad situation. Like you kind of alluded to it. Like imagine being Reed Shepard on the Kentucky campus right now. But I do think that, I mean, we just need to be like very transparent and real about this. Like this is a white dude at Kentucky in a situation that is going to lead to real NIL opportunities in that state. The son of a women's basketball legend, a men's basketball legend who won the most outstanding player at the final four, there are going to be a number of opportunities that come his way. And there are going to be donors that in my opinion, come out of the woodwork that may not be contributing to like the collectives and things like that right now. They probably would be willing to get Reed Shepard back for a second year, which makes me think that like Reed probably has to go somewhere in like the top 20, 25 to like make up the money. Now, if Reed's going to stick in the NBA and I think he's got a very real shot to, there's real value to being a one and done and being able to get to your second contract quicker. Reed is also a little bit older for a freshman. I think he's already 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So there is real value to him being a one and done in my opinion. Yeah. I think he is a one and done. Uh, I think he is, like I said, the best freshman I've seen. Where do you think I have Reed Shepard on my board right now, CJ? Oh man. 12. Yeah. I've got him at 11. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm very in. You're like, in. You're in. Is, I wonder what his wingspan is. It's got to really be really interested. Yeah. It's got to be fairly long, just some of the plays he makes. Um, and he is, you know, I, I looked it up. He's 6'3, is what they list him at. He might be 6'2. Who knows? Um, no, I think like when I watch him, I think like there's a real shot. I don't think he's 6'4, put it that way. No. Like he might be 6'2. Yeah. Um, no, it's, I mean, here's the thing about him in the NBA is every coach will fall in love with him. They'll want to play him because yeah. he because yeah. the fact that he is doing what like he's having this amazing start at Kentucky and he's he's just playing like but he's, he's playing like perfect ball. And the, the fact that he has a 16 percent usage rate is kind of impressive. Like imagine your ego when you have a start like that at Kentucky when you are who he is and you're OK with. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have a 16 percent usage rate. Um, so yeah. he's, he's going to play like however you want him to play as a pro. 
um, and he can hang on the defensive end. I mean, I think that's with like a white kid as a freshman, you're, you're worried about a lot of times, like, are they just going to get cooked defensively? And he's a really, really, really good defender. Well, look, like, let's be real about it too. Like once he hits the NBA, like there are going to be dudes that go, Oh, we're going to attack the little white kid. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's just the reality of the way the NBA rolls. Now, I think that he is smart enough. I think that his hands are good enough. I think he's disruptive with the way that he uses his hands, obviously with the steals and blocks. His timing is unbelievable, I think. Like when I watch him, I'm just like, oh my God, like this guy, his ability to time when guys are going to make passes, when guys are going to go up for shots, contesting shots, it's unbelievable. Like I, I don't know if I've seen much quite like it with somebody like him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I, I'm very in on Reed Shepard. I want guys that are basketball geniuses. Like that is my thing. Like I I love dudes that just know how to fucking play. Uh, I tweeted this last night and I think somebody like retweeted me and said like, you know, being good at basketball is underrated in like evaluation for the NBA's purposes. And I'm just like, honestly, sometimes I agree. And this is the case. Like this guy, this type of player right here, is the case where just being fucking good at basketball, that's what matters. Like Reed Shepard is clearly awesome at the game of basketball. He plays with good deceleration. He plays with great pace. He understands uh, how to move without the ball. He processes the game quicker than everybody else out on the court. He's, you know, I think he's a better athlete than what people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I just used like the white basketball player dictionary to its fullest, but it's hard like he, he's yeah. really good at basketball guys yeah yeah no i'm 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 right there with you i i love guys that actually have feel and i have an understanding of how to play i think we had this uh, talk this su summer at summer league it was like so clear the guys that understand how to play ball and the guys who don't at, yeah. in that um environment and yeah. i think it's where you can start to see the guys who are going to make it and who aren't just because there's some guys who understand how to play and there's some guys who aren't. And, and in the college level, sometimes you can hide that with um, some coaches and their systems can hide that. Um, but the way Kentucky's playing, like it's wide open. Um, it's, it's very clear that he knows what the heck he's doing. Here's, here's a question for you. Five years from now, who would you rather have Reed Shepard or uh, Rob Dillingham? Read. So here's why. And I, I'm glad that you did that because I wanted to transition to talking about Reed now. You mean to Rob? Reed. Rob, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dillingham has been incredible to start the season, and I don't want to take anything away from him whatsoever on the offensive end. Truly, there is nothing that he has showcased that like he can't really do on offense as like a lead creator. You watched him a pretty decent amount in high school, right? Dylan, like a little bit. I yeah. watched him for a game, and I also saw Reed for a game, at least a game or two. Yeah, when I watched Rob in high school, I thought that like he just was kind of a chucker, a little. Yeah, bit. I didn't. I didn't like him. I didn't like how he played. It did the one game I watched. Yeah, was, yeah. I I didn't really like how he played either in the tape that I watched, and that is completely the opposite of how he's played at Kentucky so far. Mm -hmm. Like he has been unselfish. He has been willing to make plays for his teammates. He's played at great pace while also being able to drive transition play and attack out on the break. Uh, he hasn't been over aggressive. I think that the passing has been the biggest thing that stood out to me. Like every time I watch him, I'm just like, oh no, like you can really pass and you found the right balance between going to get your own shot mm -hmm. as well as going to find shots for your teammates. I'm glad that Matty Zolo in the YouTube comments brings up he creates some crazy passing angles. He does it through eye manipulation a lot of the time, too, as well. I think he does a really, really good job of manipulating help defenders into moving where he wants them to go and then finding the angles to hit his teammates. I think Rob Dillingham has been awesome. I still think he's been quite bad on defense. Uh, and the frame worries me. Uh mm -hmm in terms of defending in the NBA, like Reed is stronger and I think is going to be able to hold up a little bit more. Uh, 
I really worry about like teams just like switching Rob Dillingham onto their best players and just going, yeah, we're going to attack you every time down the court. Yeah. His speed is, is elite though. Um, and that, yeah. that, that's where like, um, I think there's a real debate because his speed is like, that's NBA speed. And there's only a few guys, yeah. not even just NBA, that's elite NBA speed. Um, like he made Kansas dudes just look like he, like they were playing in sand. DeWan and Harris is not slow. He is not like, slow. And he, he was, there was a stretch of that game where he was running circles around those dudes. Um, yeah. So he's, he's intriguing. Like, I think we're still really early. I want to see them against more good teams. Like Miami is a really good team, but when does really Miami's defenses usually leave something to be desired. So, um, I, I, you know, I want to see these guys halfway through the SEC and kind of see where they are. Um, but yeah. like a Rob Dillingham, um, Reed Shepard, it would be fun to come back to this debate in February and, and see where we are. Um, but those guys, I, I actually think with, with Rob, I think that him being the guy, let, you know, and again, we saw a very small sample size of him in high school. I could have caught him yeah. on the wrong day. Um, but Reed, when I saw Reed, he played like this in his yeah. his grassroots basketball. Um, I would theorize that coming off the bench for Rob has been the right amount of humility for him um, to kind of get him to 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 really buy into like playing a a good role for Kentucky. So like it's one of those situations where maybe it's um, you know a guy coming in not feeling himself so much because he okay I am coming off the bench. And um, that's probably been good for him. But, yeah, I, I would take both these guys over DJ Wagner right now. Um, not to rule out him as a prospect or to say he's, you know, he's trash. And, it's, again, it's been early. And some guys just – they all they all progress at different rates. But, um, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Kentucky's best two guards come off the bench. Yeah. I, I like Rob coming off the bench is where I'm at because I like the change mm-hmm. in pace that he gives. For sure. I would probably start Reed at this point if i was them 